Hello friends, welcome back to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we are going to learn matrix as a transforming function. Or we can imagine matrices can be used to transform one vector into another vector. Let's think about the simple case, a vector in two dimension. Let's say we have x1, x2. Of course, you know that this represents a vector in two dimension. Or uh, let's take the coordinate x1, x2 and imagine this to be the position vector. Now what I do is, I'm planning to multiply this because the order of this vector is 2 by 1. There are two rows and one column. So I'm planning to multiply this by a, B, C, D. By the way, this is 2 by 2. So, multiplication is possible. And I will end up with another vector of order 2 by 1. I'm not going to perform the multiplication because I'm sure that you are perfect with those things. Anyway, I'm going to mark my answer as Y1, Y2. So, what just happened is, this vector x1, x2 is transformed into another vector y1, y2. And who did that job? Yeah, our vector a, b, c, d. So, what I am trying to convince you is, matrices can be used as transforming functions. And the input will be vectors and the output of course will be other vectors and now look at the use of identity matrix if I take 1 0 0 1 and try to transform a vector say 1 2 then what will be the answer if you apply multiplication yeah so this transformation will not change the position of the vector so this acts as the identity function or let's say identity transformation and similarly you can think about the vector cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta actually this vector has the power to rotate any vector through theta degrees so I want you to be convinced with one thing that is matrices can be used to transform vectors and one more thing if you have a vector in three dimension, let's say x1, x2, x3, then any 3 by 3 matrix will transform this vector into another vector in the same dimension. If you use any other vector, like let's say 4 by 3 or something, then it will be in some other dimension. Okay, so let's move ahead. So let's consider a square matrix. So remember, now we will be talking only about square matrices. And let's say x is a column matrix in such a way that multiplication is possible. Of course, the answer will be some y, which is of the same order as x. I hope you understood this statement then A will be the transforming matrix and X will be our input and Y will be our output. Okay, now we are going to discuss about a special case. Let's imagine A is a square matrix and X is a matrix, a column matrix in such a way that this multiplication is possible. And let's imagine the answer will be some multiple of x. So what's the speciality of this transformation? This matrix will transform x into some multiple of x. Maybe 5 times x, maybe 10 times x, maybe 1 by 2 times x, etc, etc. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take everything to the left hand side. So I get a x is equal to 0. Now, I'm going to write this as 
ax minus i lambda x or lambda x into i equal to 0 and I hope you are okay with this step because I just introduced the identity matrix over here and that gives me a minus lambda i of x is equal to 0. So look at this I started with a transformation a very special transformation ax is equal to lambda x that is a matrix which will transform our x into a multiple of x remember this simplified gives me a minus lambda i of x equal to 0 this is nothing but a homogeneous system in the previous videos we were talking about homogeneous system that will be b into x is equal to 0 we learned that a homogeneous system is always consistent and a homogeneous system will have unique solution or infinite solution but you can be 100% sure that it will be consistent now if you get the unique solution that will be nothing but capital X equal to 0 and the other possibilities you might get infinite number of possibilities for X now I wanted to remind you something which you learned in your high school you learned that if you have a homogeneous system and if determinant is equal to 0 then you will have infinite number of solutions I'll repeat once more let's say we have a x equal to 0 a homogeneous system and now suppose determinant a is equal to 0 that is going to give you infinite number of solutions um, I hope you remember in class 11 or 12 when you used to solve a linear equation system the first thing you'll find is determinant a and I'm sure that you'll verify that that is not equal to 0 and then only you'll proceed and solve you might have learned Kramer's rule or Martin's rule in matrix etc etc I'm sure that you have done this before now look at this if determinant a equal to 0 then you're going to get infinite number of solutions okay let's make things more clear we have a square matrix capital A and we are talking about a special transformation which will transform this column matrix X into a multiple of X and when we simplified this we ended up with the homogeneous system a minus lambda i of x is equal to 0 now look at this this is a homogeneous system and from our high school knowledge we know that if the determinant of this part that is a minus lambda i is equal to 0 then we will get infinite number of solutions and not the trivial solution the trivial solution is of course x equal to 0 because 0 will be equal to 0 and it's so clear that we don't care about it so I'm looking for infinite number of solutions and if I want infinite number of solution I should equate this determinant to 0 and of course this will give me an equation in lambda and if you have a 2 by 2 matrix this will be a quadratic equation if you have a 3 by 3 matrix and then we will get a cubic equation and so on and this equation is called the characteristic equation of A this was a very short video and I just wanted to talk about the characteristic equation in the next video we will be doing numericals based on characteristic equation so till then bye